There's no better feeling in rugby league than this. Holding aloft the Winfield Cup in the late afternoon of the last Sunday in September. Hello, this is Steve Mortimer, and just as I was proud to lead the mighty Bulldogs to consecutive premierships in the mid-80s, I'm also pleased to present this third episode of Winfield Cup Magic Memories. With 50 memories down and another 150 still to be revealed, we resume our random reflection of the modern game's special moments with a modest tribute to one of the league's all-time greats, Peter Sterling, a man that I had some tremendous tussles with over the course of a decade. All footballers remember their best performances, and perhaps this was Sterlo's finest hour, as he single-handedly destroyed an eastern suburb side that was on target for a top three berth in 1987. suburbs line. They're not finished with yet the Roosters. Sterling still barking instructions to them. I should say the Eels as it comes away now to Scott. He's got it away. Slater. The pass to Ericsson. Ericsson back to Sterling. Sterling. Sterling on his own. Sterling looking for a hat-trick. Can he get there? It's a hat-trick for Sterling. What a comeback as the captain this afternoon. And Peter Sterling has scored three of the best. 1987 won't be remembered fondly by Parramatta. For the reigning premiers failed to reach the Winfield Cup semi-finals after the retirements of Mick Clannan and Ray Price. However, apart from Peter Sterling's remarkable display against East, the Eels did manage to salvage something else from a disastrous campaign by pulling off one of the most incredible comebacks in rugby league history. When they came from a 22 to nil down at half-time against the eventual grand finalists, Canberra to record an improbable eight-point triumph. Mosley gets it now, now it's Sturlow. Turns the ball back inside to Mike Eden. He shapes the kick. He doesn't. He passes the ball back now to Linda. The defence comes across. He's got 15 metres to go. Beats a tackle and scores under the posts. Here go the Eels now as Linda goes from dummy half and crashes through the defence. Parramatta now with Eden feeding the ball across the left side. And this is the fullback. Atkins giving the pass out there out wide. And I think it's a try. Parramatta have staged a remarkable comeback. I mentioned earlier that Rugby League farewelled a couple of legends called Price and Cronin in 1986. Well, earlier that year, a sizeable slice of the code's history passed on when the Sydney sports ground was bulldozed to make way for the new headquarters in the spectacular shape of the Sydney Football Stadium. The old sports ground was unique in so far that it was the only arena in Sydney to run east-west, meaning that for half of the game, you'd have to contend with the afternoon sun in your eyes, which often made life difficult. As tenants of a ground that hosted several grand finals, it was fitting that Eastern Suburbs emerged with victory in the Sydney Sports Ground's final assignment. Fullback Gary Worth scored three tries in the first 20 minutes as the Roosters held out North Sydney 21 points to 14. It was a lovely pass. He's streaking away. Brian Johnson can't get him from behind. And it's going to be a North Sydney try when they needed one.
From the Sydney Football Stadium, eventually opened for business two years after the sports ground's demise, it quickly became an excellent and exciting home for the Winfield Cup. One of the stadium's early thrillers saw Cronulla eclipse South in a controversial finish. He sighted the gap, went for it, and forget all about it, Cronulla, he was gone. Longbottom is down on the ground with cramps, and uh, there are plenty of numbers out here on the left-hand side, and that's where the ball is coming now for Cronulla. They've got plenty of numbers out here as they wait away. It's gone back inside, picked up by uh, Craig Diamond, and Diamond's in the score at Cronulla try. I think you've got to be a little critical of Cronulla for not uh, getting in better position for that second shot on the field goal. Adam O'Neill. <laughs> He's been walked around the park. <laughs> wants to fight everybody. Oh, Cronulla's got a penalty! Oh, oh Adam O'Neill's right got a penalty. This is ridiculous. Oh, what drama here at the stadium. Oh, and he's just compounded the error by going up to uh, to the referee and giving him a mouthful. Now, there is a stupid action. Seen Watson. About 12 metres in from touch. Just past the corner line. A kick that can win the match for his side. And he only has kicked two from five tonight. Here it is, wasting no time. It's in the air. And he has kicked it, and Cronulla win! Uh, finish of the game, absolutely astonishing. I can't believe it that uh, a player would concede a, uh, a penalty like that in the dying moment. OK, we jump back to 1986 now to witness one of the most stirring revivals ever seen in a first-grade semi-final. As Balmain bounces back from an early 12-0 deficit to record a resounding defeat of a much fancied manly outfit at the SCG. Here's a try for Manly. Yes, Dale Shearer. All so easy. And here's the ball coming out against the feed. One by the Gale. Gale takes off. Oh, he's going to score. The easiest of tries. About 10 metres out from the Manly line. Benny Elias across the ground. Sirenan, Sirenan, Sirenan. Oh, this big man, this young giant has gone over to score. And that's the second tackle for the Tigers as Benny Elias looks for Gale, gives it to him, runs around him, throws the dummy, goes himself! Benny! Benny Elias has scored! There's no doubt that Bridge punched the ball from the Manly player's grasp. This is Gale, who's six metres out from the Manly line. Now, he's put him off. He has sent Cliff Lyons off the field of play. No sin, Ben. Right in front of the sticks, he's five metres out. Elias dummies once, gives it to Roach. Roach, uh, where is it? He's still got it. One hand out to try. Oh, Steve Roach, that was a magical ball. That was a Houdini. It's um, Balmain leading 25 to 18 as Big Cleal puts it down. It's come down to Haggart. And try. here's a try for Gurr. The Eagles are in to score in the Paddington corner. Gale has set himself in a position where he may go for a drop goal, but I doubt it. It's come across the face and then on from Bevan to Schofield. Schofield inside, and David Brooks. Brooks scores for Balmain. Balmain survived the sudden death semi-final with his victory over Manly this afternoon. Also firmly entrenched in the catalogue of classic sudden death matches is the 1993 preliminary final between Canary Bankstown and Brisbane. The Broncos were forced to defend their maiden Winfield Cup from fifth place and had to summon all their reserves of skill, determination and energy to get the better of a committed Canterbury. Make it seven against the Dogs! Julian O'Neill. Straight down to Brett Dallas. He's played at the ball. Oh, and Hancock is away! Solid enough smack on the jaw. Oh, Darren Smith! Darren Smith gets it inside! Scott Wilson under the bar! Wilson gets a try! Look for uh, Brisbane to address that problem. Oh, that was heavy stuff there while you were talking. Gilmeister was underneath, and Andrew G over the top, and Mark Brokenshire. He was right in the middle of it. Here's a chance! Terry Lamb! Lofted pass! Oh, they'll score! McCracken! McCracken! He gets the try! 16 to 10, and the doggies are barking now. Kerrod Walters, Kerrod Walters, straight up the middle. Alan Lang is away. The little fellow goes in to score. The 
Broncos, the Walters Langer combination. Putting another attacking wave together. Kerrod Walters out wide for Alan Can. Can beats him. Um, he beats centre. Goes inside the 10 and the 5. Oh! Somebody stop him! He'll run out of the stadium! After successfully retaining their title, the Broncos began 1994 with the aim of becoming the first club since Parramatta in 1983 to secure a hat-trick of premierships. It didn't take Brisbane long to realise just how much work is required to achieve such a wonderful feat when they were humbled 25 points to 12 by three-time Wooden Spooners Gold Coast in a staggering upset. Skarden goes in! But we are talking about the world champion side. Probably wouldn't think so tonight, but they are. Galea, great pass, our oh, try. Julian O'Neill gets the try. Gold Coast, can they get a try? With 35 seconds to go, David Wood stands. Coleman looking to put a player off the hip. Oh, it's on again. It's on again. Another try. Peter Gill, he gets their fifth try. Now, what? 1985 was a strange sort of year for the St George Club. The Dragons claimed the minor premierships in all three grades and were strongly favoured to pick up the biggest prize of all when they disposed of my Bulldogs. 17 points to six in the major semi-final. As we'll see later on, the Saints were to fall at the final hurdle. always the danger man, looped that pass beautifully. Saints ball, Lenane. Makes a bit of a dash, Lenane, he's stepping beautifully, heading towards the line, and Lenane will score under the post. His 17th try of the season. Steve Morton is in there. Another little kick. They go through. This time it might be a try. It's loose. Callanan falls on it. It's a try. Consolation prize for Canterbury. At last they've got a try. The philosophy which I held most dearly over my 13 seasons at the top in rugby league was a committed belief in the importance of playing positive attacking football. The fans want to see players expressing their skills and one bloke who has generated plenty of excitement in the Winfield Cup is Cronulla's dashing Andrew Enninghausen, who often comes to the Sharks' rescue like this day in 1990 when he slipped through the Canberra's guard as the clock wound down. Canberra may start to think about a field goal, though they only lead by four points. It won't uh, tie it up for them. There it is from Ricky Stewart. He makes no mistake. Miller trying to roll around. Gets it back inside. Heading house into Lee. Lee to the line. He has plenty of support. Danny Lee standing. Just three metres out. The Sharks coming home. Eddinghausen. Eddinghausen. Oh, what a try. Eddinghausen. E.T. The man from outer space has done it. It's underneath the post. Alan Wilson will attempt the conversion for the match. It's up. The importance of good goal-kicking in rugby league can never be underestimated and clubs are becoming increasingly aware these days that having the more accurate boot can make a vital difference in a tight competition. Manly Warringah started a mini-revolution in rugby league when coach Graham Lowe plucked little-known goal-kicking specialist Matthew Ridge from the New Zealand Rugby Union ranks midway through the 1990 season. Ridge submitted a superb debut for the Seagulls by kicking six goals from seven attempts in what was a sign of things to come from the Kiwi kickers. Moves in, and he has not looked like missing. Ridge can put a little more salt in the wound. Out wide. Ridge has kicked magnificently today. In 1984, one of the league's sleeping giants finally arose from a lengthy slumber when the Penrith Panthers made its first serious charge for the semi-finals since entering the frame in 1967. Late in the 84 season, I took the doggies up to the foot of the mountains for a match that was crucial to both clubs' playoff aspirations. The battle certainly lived up to its promise as we left Penrith with a nerve-wracking two-point win under our belts. Culminating in a try for Canterbury. Simmons, good pass. Gary Howe, he's found Gonzalez. Oh, he, he's still going. He's beaten the fullback. Peter Mortimer, he's over. It's a try. Gonzalez has levelled a score and the fans, the fans have gone absolutely berserk with excitement. Played again. Broman turns it inside. Johnston. It's gone to Steve Folks. Folks has gone inside the 22. Terry Lamb. Lamb has scored his second try. Up from dummy half. 
goes Robinson. He's tackled. About a half a metre out. They must push the ball to the right. Alexander's burrowed through. He scored, I think. No, yes, yes, it's a try. Mark Levy's got this kick to level. And we're inside the last five. Well and truly, he's missed it. Oh, my goodness, how could you do it? How could you do it? Staying in thriller mode, Winfield Cup Magic Memories Episode 3 moves on to 1990. Now to see how Manly Warringah got out of jail with a suspect winning try in the final minute of play against St George at Cogger Oval. Phil Gollins there to make it 2-0 to Saints at half time. Here go the Dragons again. It's Walford coming off his wing. Holds the ball up. Devastates the defence. Bamboozles them and finds Coyne going out wide. Here go the Dragons again. This is Potter linking up and finding space down Manley's right side of defence. He's looking for support on his outside. It's there in the shape of Doyle. Hancock comes across. Doyle gets a desperation pass away, but it goes nowhere. Manly Waringa now in the dying stages as O'Connor finds Shelford. Shelford links a short ball to Lydiard. The pass looked a bit suspect, but the referee says play on, and that'll be a winning try for Manly. They get out of jail. In 1982, the New South Wales Rugby League admitted new clubs into the competition for the first time since 1967. Success was a little slow in coming to both Canberra and Illawarra. However, the Raiders finally cracked the top five for the first time in 87, and didn't they make an impression? No one gave the Green Machine much hope in the playoffs, but they swiftly cast aside South Sydney and then Eastern Suburbs to qualify for their maiden grand final appearance. The Raiders came from 18-14 down early in the second half of the 1987 final to overwhelm East by 32 points to 24. comes away quickly, Spina's has got it on now to Hall, Hall decides to go on his own, he's got that pass away and quickly it's come away now to Melrose, Melrose, Melrose still on his own, floats it over the top, Morris is in, great try, great football, Tony Melrose, last tackle against the Raiders, it comes out to Regan, away it goes to Kinner, Kinner around one, he's got it back towards Coyne, Coyne can he get his pass away, he doesn't need to, it's another one to the Raiders, Corkery goes from dummy half. Matthew Corkery, Corkery's in the clear. Corkery will score, he's in! What a super try! And that might put the Raiders into the grand final. Kevin Walters, Coyne. Away it comes from Henjack and the rounds. Kevin Walters again. Henjack, he's got it back to Jackson and Jackson will score. And that's good by Roosters. The Raiders are up against the Sea Eagles next week. The following two seasons provided us with two of the most notable semi-finals in Winfield Cup history. In 1988, I was on the sidelines recovering from a broken arm, while Canterbury dominated the major semi against minor premiers Cronulla to run out convincing winners 26 points to 8. Really putting their kicking game together and just the start that Phil Gould wanted their minds are well and truly on the job. They come up with another set of six tackles. Away goes O'Brien. Support back on the inside. This time will Gillespie score. No, Joe Thomas. He'll pick up his second try. Put that down to pressure. And it goes for Hagen, the Dunn, still pumping out all the heavy stuff up the middle. And away goes Hagen. He's going to have plenty of support. He's got Alston on the outside. Oh, it was a line ball that passed. And Terry Lamb, always there, is going to pick up the try. Canterbury banks down. The first team into the 1988 grand final, Phil Gould. The coach who's done it all on his first year, Terry Lamb, another fine game from him. The 1989 major semi-final was a lot closer than the one 12 months earlier. And that gave us a memorable encounter, as Balmain edged out South 20 points to 10. What a pass! Oh, Phil Blake, take a bow! Maven's got the try! Again Elias, again to Roach, same pattern, back for Freeman this time, then on for Neil. Now it's with Brasher. Brasher's got Carrier with him. That's a grab! Grab for the corner! Try! Great try to the Tigers and a great comeback. He'll play it right in front of the post. Ropes a dummy half. The flick inside for Siriman. Can they stop him? Can they? Did he get it down? It's a try! They couldn't stop Siriman. Now here's a chance for Balmain. The reflexes of the cat. Neil, straight across the field for Courier. Greg, Courier will score. Oh, 
Benny Elias set it up with the charge down. Courier had the pace. He leaps into the air. The Tigers might be into their second grand final in two years. You know, we just want to get to a grand final. That's all that matters. There's the situation with the nose. I've seen it look better. Uh, mate, it's been, it's been worse, too, so I'm all right. Thanks, Steve. Steve Root sideline as Mick Neal takes the football back inside. Freeman's in support. Freeman down the touchline. has got Gary Jack inside. Jack's got support too from McGuire. The pass may have been forward. It's been allowed. McGuire's in the score for the Tigers. There's the siren. It's all over. The Tigers will be celebrating big tonight. They're in the big one, the grand final. Earlier on, I described winning the Winfield Cup as one of the greatest feelings that any footballer could possibly achieve. Well, apart from the victory laps and the representative jerseys, one of the other benefits of playing the game is building mateship with some terrific people. Mainly through my involvement with the New South Wales State of Origin side, I was able to associate with top blokes like Brett Kenny and Michael O'Connor. Old Bert decided to call it a day at the end of 1993, and it was good to see him go out a winner as captain of his beloved Parramatta. But Martin Marcella and Kenny, after originally it was King and Surinan. Parramatta again, Ericsson, Ericsson back to Flanagan. The crossfield, Flanagan finds Kenny, beautiful flick pass, that was vintage stuff. Krakovic, and Krakovic gets to within 18 metres of the line. He'll have to play the ball. What a lovely pass that was from Kenny, Tollett. A long pass comes to Kenny again, another longer pass out wide, finds Ericsson, Ericsson. Ericsson trying to stand up the opposition. Gee, that was good skills. He's got the pass away, and that's a try to Peter McPhail. And what a career it's been. Brett Kenny, a wizard on two legs. Undoubtedly one of the all-time greats. He'll never forget his incredible duels with the incomparable Wally Lewis in State of Origin. Twelve months earlier, Snoz was ready for retirement in his farewell game at Brookvale Oval. He managed to salute the locals with a try, but was denied the result he wanted in the dying minutes. Pincinelli trying to get Pauls to the corner, he had enough room. Well, there seemed to be enough defence, they just read that badly. Schipoletti, back for Neil. Neil with a loose pass. Fritz knocks on. Kicked ahead by O'Connor, he might keep this on the toe. It sits up. It's his last game at Brookvale. He might score a try that wins it. It's definitely in the storybook, that one. It's a fairy tale to Michael O'Connor. Michael O'Connor. They call him Snows. He is a very big hero at the moment. Loose ball. It bounced up beautifully. Manley trying to hang on. The Steelers trying to get home at the death. Pincinelli. Touched by Manley, chance, Wishart to the corner. Wishart and Ridge, Wishart will get there. And he will improve and improve, and Manley have gone at the death. Oh, the Steelers going crazy, and why wouldn't they? What a great play right at the death of this game. The Steelers are up. Don't worry about Brisbane next week. Manley, start playing your trip away. It's all over tonight. The Sea Eagles are gone. They came up short. They have all collapsed on the field. They cannot believe it. The siren is just about to go. Graham Lowe with a broken heart. After taking up the 1988 Premiership in my last year with the club, Canterbury missed the semi-finals in the following two seasons, but enjoyed a return to form in 1991 under Chris Anderson. At the end of 22 rounds, the Bulldogs found themselves in a playoff for fifth spot with Western Suburbs, who were seeking their first semi-final berth since 1982. To Smith, to Patmore. Desperate stuff as the clock winds down, and I think we've got a lot of football left in this nine minutes. Dummy runners everywhere. McGrady to the open. McGrady to Darren Smith. He gets it out to Doolan. Doolan to the corner. They get it. Sensational stuff everywhere. The try that will wrap it up. Taylor to the end goal. There it is. Great thinking. Simons gets the try. That's all there. Western Suburbs will go ahead to meet Canberra on Saturday. There's been a lot of fine overseas players who have made an impact on the Winfield Cup over the years. 
like Gary Freeman, Hugh McGahn, Elry Hanley and Martin Afaya. But the domination of British and Kiwi imports received a jolt in 1993 when a new nation burst onto the scene in the dazzling form of Fijian flyer Noah Nandruku. Very few people in Australia had heard of the former rugby union star, but after a brilliant debut season which saw him at the top of the Winfield Cup try scoring list, Nandruku had become a household name, especially in Canberra. Loses his footing, Silva comes again, he bends him up. Oh, Nandruku! Oh, Speaking of making an impact, that's exactly what young Andrew Johns did in the opening round of the 1994 Winfield Cup. Playing alongside his brother Matthew, the teenage Newcastle halfback notched 23 points against South from two tries, seven goals and a field goal in the biggest points haul of all time by a first grade debutant. Great game in his debut match for the Newcastle Knights in first grade. His first idea in that instance would have been the best to turn the ball back inside. But now Big tackle by McCray, but by the, doesn't he unload the ball well when yeah. he's in oh. the... Here's a chance for the Newcastle Knights. Toe forward by Andrew Johns. Can he score his second? Yes. yes. Great try, Andrew Johns. Gee, Hugh Blacks are going to have a tough job with a Just Jeans Man of the Match award. He scores his second try of the afternoon. He kicks seven from seven and a field goal. If you had said 20 years ago that North Sydney and Penrith would be two of the strongest clubs in the 1990s, most people would have laughed at you. However, by 1991, those two teams were ready to tussle for a grand final berth in a captivating major semi-final. Penrith ran out winners that day, 16 points to 14. Inside, Walker, back to Alexander. North's in trouble here just before half time. They're in a ton of trouble. Billy Moore on the fringe, that's better support. Jackson, where's the support for him? He beats Alexander easily. He gets it out for Hall. Hall gets a double, what a try! Look out! That 69-year wait, it might be over. Being involved in rugby league gives you the chance to tote up plenty of frequent flyer points. The buzzwords of the 1990s are expansion, promotion and development as the New South Wales Rugby League fosters the code right throughout the country. Fresh territory was broken in 1991 when the Winfield Cup travelled to Darwin and Adelaide. 30,000 fans turned out on a miserable night in the city of churches to see the Saints repel Balmain. He got it down. He can really finish this man. Right on the 22 and it's on the last tackle. Hodges. Little kick for Beattie. Martin the fire was put down, it doesn't matter. Balmain had another working holiday that year when they met Penrith and Darwin, but the Panthers were too strong. It's on the last. Carter. Mile of players left over out wide. They keep it alive. Smith. Smith getting it back. And finally, Bentley, is it? It's the Panthers, and I think Cole Bentley has got out there. Carter, Brad is on. Stepping and stepping through. Smith, the leading try scorer in the Winfield Cup, is going to add another one to his tally for 91. Newcastle's first major assignment in the Winfield Cup came about in 1990 when they confronted Balmain in a sudden death arm wrestle for fifth spot. Unfortunately for Newcastle, the Tigers were too tough a hurdle and they went down 12 points to four in a rugged match. so far. Three minutes to go and the Tigers cling on by two. Interception and Brian, and Brian. Tigers are in the semi-finals. Well, that's all we've got time for in this episode of Winfield Cup Magic Memories.